So let's talk about the Natural Resource Canada maps. Okay, there's all sorts of very important information on these uh, NRS maps. Um, the name of the map is shown down here in the middle. And then the map code, which uh, over here we can see it's 82J13. That's the code of the map. Um, if we look over here on the right side, you can see that there's a grid of nine squares. Each of those squares is a map sheet. And this, the present map sheet, this Mount Assiniboine map, is shown in the middle. And so you now know what all the adjourning maps might be. So if you are doing a trip that's right on the very edge and you need to go into the next map sheet, you can be prepared with that particular map sheet. Underneath the name, we have the provinces that are involved in that map. In this case, it's British Columbia and Alberta because we have a borderline running right through the middle. Then we have the map scale, which is shown as a ratio, 1 to 50,000, which means that the size of this map that it covers, covers 50,000 times the, um, the area in reality. Um, so a map sheet that was 1 to 250,000 would cover uh, an area that was 250,000 times bigger than the map sheet in front of you. So much more detail on this particular one. Um, then we also have a scale of distance. So you can see in kilometers we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which coincides very nicely with the blue grid lines within the map, the UTM grid, which is a square kilometer. All of these are one kilometer by one kilometer. The contour interval is also very important to ascertain on your map and it's found right here. In this case, it's 40 meters between each contour. We'll get back to that one. Also, when was your map published? This is very important. The published date is actually found over here. In this case, it's 1996. And this will determine what the uh, datum or the survey date of the map was. There's two datums that were created in North America, one in 1927 and one in 1983. And it's important to be able to understand which one your map is because it actually will make changes between the two. This one is NAD, or North American Datum, 1983. All maps will have a published date on them somewhere. On these types of maps, you're going to find it over here in the lower left corner. In this case, it's 1996. The reason it's important to ascertain that is it has implications as to how up-to-date the map is. If it was uh, published in 1930, obviously a lot of things have changed in terms of roads and infrastructure since then. Um, also, it has implications on the declination of the map in terms of how it relates to Magnetic North, as that is a changeable entity. Every topographical map will show you the declination on the side of that particular map sheet. The declination is essentially the angle difference between grid north and magnetic north. So in this case, you can see this angle with arrows. We have one arrow to magnetic north, one arrow to grid north, and one arrow to true north. The angle difference is important when dealing with a compass and a map together. More on this later. When we start looking at the map sheet itself, we'll notice that there's a whole bunch of different colors on that map sheet, and those colors all mean something, and all the symbols on the map sheet mean something as well. So let's get into that. So the green areas on the map symbolize forested areas. And so on these particular mountainous maps, you'll see the green in the valleys and then a tree line, which is the, the line between the green and the brown areas or the white areas. The white areas have no forests or very little forest and the green areas are thicker forest. This line is not a complete line. 
in the sand. It's, uh, it could vary, it could change over time um, as avalanches happen, as global warming occurs and, and the, the forest actually marches further up the hill. The brown on the map are all contour lines. So all of these brown lines are contour lines. And a contour line is a line that joins together points of equal elevation. So if you were to walk along one of these lines, you would always be at the same elevation above sea level. Contour lines do a few things for us. They show elevation above sea level. They show you the shape of the object or of, of the landform. And they also show us information about how steep that landform is. So blue on the map are water-based features. So we could have lakes, we can have rivers, creeks, or intermittent creeks, which are shown as a dotted blue line, and swamp features, which are these features here beside this lake, and glaciers as well be, will be shown as a shade of blue. Anything that is red or orange is a uh, man-made or cultural landform. So in this case, we have a road, we have secondary roads, we may have a built-up area such as a town site. And any of the black on the map are either given names by us humans, or they are um, facilities like campgrounds or cabins, um, churches, hospitals, bridges, all those kinds of things are shown in black. Most maps will have an index of symbols uh, on the margins or on the back. So if you are unsure as to what a symbol means, look here or flip your map upside down. It should tell you what that symbol means. <laughs>